everyone and welcome back to Going Snake. I am Jaja Lynx. Thank you for joining me today for this episode. So today we are going to be kind of continuing to work around this downtown section and kind of working just outside of this downtown section. Um, we are going to be working on a cargo station and the beginnings of what I'm planning on being sort of a warehouse district type situation. Um, I'm picturing it kind of as a area that used to be real industrial and is kind of in the process of being gentrified a little bit um, because of its proximity to downtown. So for the time being, I, I want this to air area to be Still pretty warehousey, but it's kind of a situation where it might would change in the future. So that's what we're going to be working on for this one. But before we get to that, there are a couple of quick things I do. The first one being, well, I guess really the first one happened off camera and you saw it just a little bit there in the cinematics, but I did expand the residential a little bit off camera. Um, between the last episode and this one. So you'll kind of see it here and there. I just added a couple of residential blocks um, down there at the bottom right of the screen, kind of over in the direction of the brewery. So that's one thing I did that I didn't feel like was important enough to really include in any of these episodes. It was really a pretty similar build to the um, residential that I built on the Main Street episode. So we did that. And then I also started working on a little bit of public transportation. I'm kind of starting to piece together in my head what exactly I want the public transportation situation to be in Going Snake. Um, so as you can see, I am working on a tram. I felt like that would be a nice little addition to the city. I want it to just have kind of a quaint old town feel to it, I guess. Um, I'm not going to have it be very tram focused. I think that I'm just going to do this one line and then I'm going to have the rest of the public transportation mostly be buses. But I thought it would be cool to have a tram that went kind of... I couldn't really work it to fit right on Main Street, but it kind of goes a block off Main Street and then it's takes a right and it's going to go down this street here which i'm planning on being also sort of a commercial center as well so that commercial center that's going to happen in the future is going to have the tram running through it so i wanted that to just kind of be in the thick of things in the area that's going to be a little bit more commercial focused maybe a little bit more touristy and i kind of picture that as almost an attraction of the town you know just a nice quaint mountain town tram system all the tourists will want to ride it so that's what i was kind of thinking there and now we are going to get to work on the cargo train so i was going to start just making the warehouse district this episode but as i was starting to do it i started thinking we don't really need warehouses because we have no industry um and it wouldn't really make sense to build a warehouse section when they're not really doing anything. Um, so as you can see at the bottom uh, in our, whatever it is, the things that we need bars, <laughs> the demand, we desperately need industry. So my plan right now is I'm gonna get this train station built so that we can hopefully start bringing in a little bit of goods from outside of the city. Start getting some of the demand that all of my commercial buildings are having. Um, all of my buildings are saying that there aren't enough goods to sell. So I'm hoping that this will help with that a little bit. And it's also going to give my warehouses a little something to do, I hope. And then once I've got this built and we have a little bit more of a trade system set up, I'm going to start focusing on those warehouses. I'm going to start working on some industry. 
I've got plans. I think the next episode is going to be on the forestry area. So yeah, that's, that's the plan. I'm really wanting to just kind of overhaul our whole industry situation. Cause right now there's, there's none, there's nothing. And, um, it's kind of messing up the city a little bit there. None of my commercial places have goods to sell. There's nothing happening. It's kind of a mess. Anyway, so this is just me screwing around with the train track that I, I built a train connection to the outside of the map, but I didn't really build it to anything. It just kind of ended like right along the edge of the map. So I'm working on getting it over towards downtown. I built a little bit of an overpass there. And then I just spend some time terraforming and trying to get this thing straightened out a little bit. It's uh, It was tough to put together a train route that looked somewhat realistic and worked with this mountainous terrain. I spent a lot of time on this and ended up redoing it a handful of times. I don't show all of it because that would just be miserably boring, um, but yeah. And I also spent quite a bit of time working on that little bridge passing over the highway there. And I'm also planning on somewhere along this train line, I think probably just past where it goes over the river, but I haven't 100% decided on it yet. I think I'm gonna build a second little town, almost like a suburb, but I'll probably call it a town. Um, that's gonna be kind of forestry focused, maybe a little bit of farming. Um, just again, trying to start getting the industry picked up a little bit. I'm wanting to do, it'll actually probably be a, more farming because that's where the flatland is. And I don't feel like it's gonna be too terribly easy to build farms on top of these mountains that are on the other side of the river. So I, I think somewhere along the path of this train track is where I'm gonna build some farmland, but that's also gonna be a future episode. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, cause like I've mentioned before, I, I do want this to be a functional city. And right now it's, it's still not quite there yet. And that's kind of one of the major things that I think I need to work on to start getting it there. Right now, this this town is a mess. Nothing works right. And uh, I want to get it to where it's working right. And I also want to build up the population. And I also want to build a school. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot that I want to do. So um, I'm not sure if I show much more of messing around with the trains, but I think at this point it's more or less built and um, I'm starting work on the train station. And I had fun with this build. I think it came out pretty cool. I was kind of debating on whether I wanted to just use the vanilla cargo station or if I wanted to find something on the workshop. Uh, as you can see, I ended up going with the vanilla one and just kind of customizing it as much as I could and trying to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, all in all, I do like this asset. It's a little bit too nice. Um, Cause I am kind of picturing this as a little bit more of a rundown area. And I, I do some things to try to make it a little less nice, but we'll see. I may do a little bit more work on it in the future as I'm kind of d continuing to develop this area and getting more of a feel of how I want it to look. It may evolve a little bit, but I ended up being fairly happy with it. And then I spent a good bit of time here on this bridge going over the train track as well. And this I'm actually very pleased with. Um, I'm still kind of getting the hang of building cool looking bridges. The whole ability to even do this is totally new to me coming from console. 
um, like this is a impossible setup just about on console but I'm getting there I I'm getting there I don't know what else to really say about that but I, I am pretty pleased with how this bridge came out um, these network walls are game changers they're so sick yeah I tweaked that just a little bit to kind of get it smooth and bridge-like looking. And then once I had this wall done, I actually, I found these little statues. Um, I think it was like a lion statue or something like that, probably from Park Life. And I just kind of threw them on the edge. Oh, it was a dragon, that's what it is. I threw them on the corner of the bridge just to kind of, I don't know, give it a little, start and stopping point. I think it came out pretty cool. It was a nice little uh, detail piece. I don't know exactly what the significance of these dragons is to the people of Going Snake. Maybe the guy who built this bridge just likes dragons. Or maybe that's our mascot. <laughs> we'll see. Who knows? Maybe our future college team's mascot will be the dragons. That'd be pretty sweet. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, I put some dragons on the bridge, and, and I like the way that that came out. Um, I promise, before too much longer, I'm going to start actually working on that cargo station. <laughs> there were a lot of distractions on this episode to kind of get things in place for what I was wanting to do because I, I have so much I want to do but I don't have the infrastructure in place to actually do it so I and it was it's kind of like the episodes that I had to build all those intersections for a little earlier on in the series I'm kind of trying to figure out how to balance all of that and show the important things because there's so much to build but I don't want these episodes to be hours long But um, I think that this cobblestone really looks nice on that bridge. It really helps kind of distinguish it and make it look finished. So I was happy with the way that came out. All right, and now we are finally getting to the work on this cargo station here. So I just slapped down one of these parking lot roads to use as the entryway for it and um, I thought that that worked out pretty well I was thinking about maybe just sitting the whole thing on a parking lot road but I ended up not doing that I felt like this made a little bit more sense and then I kind of turned it into like a queue for I figured trucks come in and I don't know get weighed and unloaded or whatever they have to do when they show up to have goods shipped out. Um, so I figure they kind of queue up in, in that line there to uh, to get that done. And then this was just a little warehouse, but it had these little doors on it that I figured could be almost like a maintenance bay or something like that for the trains. So I, I threw some train lines down that just kind of lead into them. And I may rearrange that at some point because um, I'm thinking about possibly having it so one of these lines goes straight through the cargo terminal. So there's a chance I may do like a fourth line that doesn't go into that bay. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to have all of that laid out, but for right now, it just ends in the bay. And then of course, you have to put fences. I think fences really do a lot to add some nice realism and detail to this game. Especially this broken fence asset, I think it's pretty cool. And it fits the kind of, I really need to silence my phone. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> it fits the kind of grungy industrial aesthetic that I'm picturing for this area. Um, so far, this city is not very grungy looking at all, so hopefully I'm able to pull it off and make it look right. 
Um, I, I have some ideas, but we'll see what actually ends up happening. Um, but yeah, I... Oh man, my whole phone going off thing derailed me there. Um, this build itself is not super grungy, I don't think. Um, just because the cargo station is kind of neat and tidy. But I do think that as this area expands and I add more of those sort of dingy warehouse assets and stuff like that and use some decals and some dirt and more broken fences and stuff like that, I think that it's going to start to look a little bit more dilapidated and run down kind of how I want it to look. And here I figured this would just be a little parking lot thrown in here for employees in the warehouse area, employees of the cargo terminal, um, whatever else, I don't know, maybe truck driver parking or something like that, because there's not a ton of parking for the trucks in the terminal. These terminals are definitely a little bit on the smaller side, I feel like, so um, I almost picture it as sort of an expansion of that. That Beetle is the perfect vehicle to be parked in this dingy warehouse district. I feel like a person who drives a flowered tie-dye Beetle like that would never ever work in an area like this. Nor would the person who drives this microelectric smart car. Oh, now it's gone. <laughs> It's the perfect cars for this situation. Um, I threw some bushes in along the side here. I don't know if I'm super happy with how they look. <laughs> I don't even know why I put that truck there. Um, well, let's look at it as an art piece. I don't know. I was trying to add a little detail. I don't think that makes any sense at all, but it does kind of look cool. So I don't know, whatever. It gets the job done. And um, yeah, I was just trying to make the transition between the parking lot and the warehouse a little more seamless. Just get some color in here, add some detail. Okay, so this is something pretty neat, I suppose. This was a pretty big piece of detail work that I did. So these vanilla shipping containers I do not like at all. I think they're way too bright. They're kind of shaped funny too, and I just don't like them. Um, so I downloaded a ton of containers from the workshop, and I basically just threw them on top of the containers to hide them. I tried to use, um, oh, what is it? the um, prop deleter tool. I can't think of what it's called right now. Prop it up maybe. Um, I tried to use that to go in and delete the containers from the cargo terminal asset, but I guess they're considered part of the building and you can't. Yes. <laughs> and uh, now my iPad is talking to me. I don't know if you could hear that, but it thought I said Hey Alexa, I guess, or hey Siri. Yeah, I can't keep track of which AI voice I'm talking to. Wow, this is a train wreck, but we're just gonna keep going. Um, yeah, I couldn't delete those. I guess it's part of the building. So instead I just built new containers over them. That's it. <laughs> That's what happened there. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier with building sort of a queue for the trucks coming in and out. And I ended up re rearranging my truck placement like five times because I kept putting them in places that didn't make any sense. Like one lane would have trucks coming in from both sides. And I imagine if that's the situa situation, they're just gonna hit each other and no one's gonna be able to get past and that's not gonna work. So yeah, you'll see me do some stupid things as far as that goes. In a little bit here but I fix it eventually I promise but I thought this was a cool idea and I felt like it added some nice detail to to this uh, little 
entryway to the cargo station. It's really all just in an effort to make this not look like a vanilla asset. I, I wanted it to... I didn't want to have to download a new one from the workshop. I feel like... I don't have the most powerful computer in the world, and I feel like if I can minimize the assets that I have as much as I can in the long term, that is going to be beneficial. And a lot of my plans already, they're going to involve me having to download a bunch of assets. So if I can avoid it, I'm trying to. And I just felt like this was a situation where I didn't necessarily need to download a new asset for it. And I had the stuff already downloaded to kind of spruce it up a little bit and make it look right. So that's what I tried to do. Oh, and another thing that I did between the last episode and this one, all those trucks driving by reminded me. Um, so I was subscribed to a bunch of workshop trucks, uh, shipping trucks, 18 wheelers, stuff like that. And you probably saw them driving around to an extent in the previous episodes. There weren't a ton of them um, because I didn't have any industry, but they were there every now and then. But I mostly had 18 wheelers downloaded and they didn't look right in this city. This being mostly a, a small town, I feel like we're not dealing with the kind of volume that necessarily warrants a giant 18 wheeler being sent to these tiny little shops that we have downtown. So it was kind of, it just didn't look right to me seeing those driving around. So I unsubscribed from almost all of the 18 wheelers that I had. I think there's still like an Amazon one or something that drives around. Um, and instead I got a bunch of little box trucks. Well, not little exactly, but smaller than an 18 wheeler box trucks. And that's kind of what we're using now for most of our shipping vehicles. Um, so you saw a handful of vehicles driving out of the uh, train when it arrived there a little bit ago. Just thought that was worth mentioning it. In terms of the look of the city, it is going to be probably a pretty significant change. Um, more than anything, I th just think it looks better. It just Not even that it looks better, it just doesn't look wrong. Because it, it just didn't look right having a bunch of 18-wheelers driving around. I thought it was kind of silly and didn't make sense. But I like those box trucks. I think that they work a little bit better. I also downloaded a bunch of food trucks that... Um, I don't know, I was hoping would just sort of drive around the city, but they're, um, they're also for shipping for whatever reason. Um, so they come out of the train station and they go into the, the cargo terminal and I, I don't know, I don't like the way that looks. So I might unsubscribe from those unless I can figure out how to get them to not do that. Anyway. So yeah, now I'm just kind of putting some finishing touches on the train track itself. Um, I did really like, I think this part was cool going up the mountain there where it sort of zigzags. I don't know how realistic that is for a giant train to be pulling itself slowly up this winding road that goes up a mountain, but I thought it looked kind of cool. And then I added a little bit more detail here, just kind of trying to create some areas that are a little more visually interesting to, to look at from time to time. Um, to be honest, I don't love how this section came out, so that might change. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, the, ap the episode is wrapping up now, so I am going to go ahead and say my goodbyes. But before I do that, I would just like to extend a friendly reminder to anyone who might have stumbled upon this series that um, you can subscribe and that would be awesome and I would hugely appreciate it. Uh, if you want to leave a like, that would be awesome as well. If you have any comments, any thoughts on anything I've done, 
whether you think it's cool or just downright awful and it drove you to never want to watch the series again i would love to hear your thoughts and um yeah i i'm pretty happy with how this build came out i'm looking forward to seeing this area continue to develop um, my plan for the next episode I don't think necessarily involves this area too terribly much, but before too long you're going to start seeing it a little bit more. And now, without further ado, we have a before and after, <laughs> although <laughs> it's a little bit funny because the before and after is just a blank piece of land. And then what I build on the blank piece of land. So hopefully future before and afters are a little bit more interesting. And I'm sure they will be. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone for watching. It has been a pleasure and I will see you for the next one.